It's time to sound design. What is going on Rocket Powered Sound Designers? Today, we're going to be making rhythm basses just like this in Serum. So the techniques that I'm teaching you guys today, you can literally apply to any sound and basically turn any previously made basses into huge rhythm sounds. So I'm super excited to teach you guys some of the techniques in the video. So what do you say? We go ahead and jump straight into the tutorial. Now, if you guys are watching this video and you're not already subscribed, make sure you cl consider clicking that subscribe button if you're interested in Serum tutorials every single day. That's right, for the rest of your life, I'm putting out a serum tutorial every single day. So if you're interested in that, make sure you click that subscribe button. If not, then whatever. Anyways, so starting off, we want to typically um, start with a growly waveform or a sound that has a lot of um, vocal frequencies or uh, elements to the sound. So we can go ahead and see some good examples of this in the spectral area. There's a lot of sounds or wavetables that we can go through. For example, the Monster series. Perfect. And, um, but for this particular tutorial, um, I'm actually gonna be using FFT Squeal because it does kind of have that same kind of vocal elements that I was talking about. And when we go ahead and put a bend positive and start to scrunch the waveform in towards the middle, we can get the same kind of effect. So, you know, what I ended up doing in the original sound is, you know, adding in some movement to uh, just kind of give the, make the sound come to life, I suppose, right? But you know, that's just the general basics to any sound, am I right? So, you know, one of the things that I typically do with my rhythm basses is I always modulate the level from zero to 100. And then I go ahead and fill it in this the, fill in the blank areas that are missing out on sound. So typically the ranges that are less than 50% here. And I fill them in using a multiband compressor and a couple of effects that I'm gonna get into later. Now, all right, we have the waveform down, but what's the next step? The next step is we need some more voices. You know, we need that typical rhythm sound. You know, what actually makes rhythm rhythm. Now, basically the more voices that we turn up, on the unison, the more copies of the waveform are gonna be played at one single time. And you guys are gonna to start to see more and more lines as we start to turn up. The max is actually 16, so as you can see here, if you went ahead and counted all these, we have a total of 16 lines. And each of those lines represent a different waveform. And the two yellow ones sticking out in the middle are our two like uh, left and right and then when we have it at 15, we have one mono, okay? And when we go ahead and drop the random phase down, we create the classic rhythm sound that we hear in all those tracks. Now you're probably like, okay, why is it doing that? Now the random phase is actually controlling the amount of space, um, or the amount, I shouldn't say space, the area that each of these waveforms have to start. So when we have the random phase turned up 100%, each of those copies are gonna start any variable, any variable in between this. So they could start right here or they could start right here. It depends, whatever it is, because you know, it's random. But when we turn it down to zero, we're focusing that area in more and more to a singleized point. So now they all are starting at the exact same spot, which creates that sound. And I think it sounds pretty nice. So. Anyways, I went ahead and turned up the detune. Now guys, when you're working in a lot of voices, you know, you can only put on like nine and get the same effect, but typically, you know, I like boosting it up to 16 and get a huge effect, uh, but that really kills your CPU. Okay, but we got that down, okay? That's basically the fundamentals for starting off our rhythm sound. Now we gotta add in some movement and we, we're gonna do that with the filter. Now, a general filter that I like to use for my rhythm basses is a band reject. I've made some really cool effects with this. Um, so, what I did in the sound that I showed you in the demo was I just turned up the cutoff a little bit and see, not much is happening. It's basically like we have a notch filter right now, but the width is gonna allow us to control the Q factor or the amount that we're gonna be spreading out of this peak here. 
So I'm gonna be modulating the width backwards. And when we start to turn up the resonance, Okay, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Okay. Doesn't sound super cool, but guys, stick with me. We're gonna turn up the drive now. And now we officially have some movement into the sound. Like, now we're talking. Okay, so next step is the effects here. Now, there's a number of things that we can do. Now, most of the stuff that we do in the effects section is simply just to enhance the bass altogether, but there are a few driving sounds that I typically can use, and those consist of a the combs filter. So that can be found right here in the miscellaneous section. And just modulating that can create some really cool effects. So I'll just leave it there. And then, um, you know, we can throw on like a flanger. This is just enhancing right here. Making the sound yours, you know, making it unique. You know, it's completely up to you. Um, but I'm going to leave that stuff alone for now because really that's not the basics. This isn't Rhythm 101, okay? That's just your style, you, however you want to make it. So the next piece or the next element that I think is very important is definitely going to be the delay. I put a short delay on almost all of my rhythm sounds. Now you're probably wondering, all right, so that just sounds like complete garbage. I've never even put a delay on a bass, so why are you doing that? Well, listen up here. So when we, when I say short delay, I mean very short delay. We turn on BPM, or not, but we turn on link here, and that's basically going to give us the ability to only move um, one side here, so we can move the left and it will move the right with us. But we want to go ahead and turn off BPM sync. That way, we have complete control over the time it takes for each beep or for each delay to make its cycle. And as you can hear, we immediately have a nice robotic sound because the sound's just being concentrating, looping itself over very quickly, which, which can create some pretty cool results here. Now, if you wanted to modulate this, well, not necessarily modulate it, if we wanted to be able to control this, um, I like having it a little bit short, but a little bit long, like that. A lot of rhythm producers actually use that trick. I showed you guys that in the demo, but I'm going to leave it back down to here just to mess around. Okay, so next is the multiband compressor, pretty straightforward, just another thing to enhance, and that's really it for the most part. Everything else is an enhancer to the sound, um, but generally I just want to give you, the guy, you guys the idea. See how cool that is? It literally sounds like a rhythm sound, or like a FISO sound, I mean. Um, but I just kind of want to give you guys the general tools that you guys can apply to your own music so you can go ahead and make your own rhythm sounds on your own. Now, if you guys found that tutorial helpful, make sure you drop a like. It gives me an idea of how many of you guys actually like the sound. All right, guys, without further ado, my name is Shane from Rocket Powered Sound, and I will catch you guys in the next Serum tutorial.